Are you planning or probably you have some ports open to internet to allow the connections to a VPN server, to get connection to the Winbox, to the WebFIC, or maybe to an internal device with a private IP by using port forwarding? Port knocking can help you to add an extra layer of security. In this video, I'm going to explain from scratch how port knocking works and how we can easily implement the feature in my Rotic devices. Welcome to the network trip. If we are trying to establish a remote connection to our my Rotic device via Winbox, via SSH, or to any other service that is running in that device, such as VPN server, for example, we'll need to open that port to internet and basically those ports will be visible to everyone not only to us obviously we'll have a complex username and password combination but port knocking is gonna add an extra layer of security by closing even the open ports and it's gonna allow only the users that are knocking a pretty specific sequence of ports to gain access to those services. That's the idea behind port knocking. Port knocking is a mechanism to secure a network device by closing all the ports, even those that we are going to use. If we are going to establish a Winbox connection, we'll need to have the Winbox port open. But initially, port knocking is going to close that port as well. If we need to access that service, then we must provide the secret knock. And what is the secret knock? It's basically a pre-arranged pattern, a sequence of ports. We're going to say, for example, the sequence is going to be TCP 8000, then 7000, then 7440, or something like that. We can add any amount of ports that we want, that is completely up to us. Port knocking is just one layer of security. We must remember that in cybersecurity, we must use a multi-layer approach. And port knocking is just one of those layers. We must not use port knocking as the only form of defense. Please be aware of that. The process that port knocking is gonna follow is the following. First, we need to define the sequence of ports. So like the list that I have just shown to you. Then we need to create some rules in the firewall. The idea is to capture the source IP address of the user that is sending that knock. And we are going to move that IP address through a progressive list of IPs. And then finally, when that user is sending the last knock, we are going to take the source IP address and we'll include that IP address into a trusted list and now only the IPs that are in the trusted list will have access to the service such as the Winbox, such as SSH or any of the VPNs that can be running in that device. So let's go to the lab and let's configure from scratch this port knocking mechanism in this router device. So you can see here that I have a remote computer then I have the firewall, a one connection, a LAN connection. At this point, that device is allowing only SSH and Telnet to users on internet. All the remaining ports are closed. But the problem, as I mentioned, is that Winbox and SSH is open to that user, but also to everyone else. And that's not the idea. We need to add port knocking to allow only the users that know the sequence. So let's go to the Winbox. At this point, I have that firewall. So basically, this is a pretty simple firewall that is blocking everything but the ports TCP 82, 91, and 22. The idea now is that those services will be accessed by trusted IPs only. So one approach can be just creating a static list with all the IPs that are allowed to access those services. But what happens if you are traveling to Mexico or you are traveling to Japan or you are traveling to Germany? 
Do you know the public IP that you are going to be using? Of course not. That's why in that case we need port knocking. We are going to dynamically capture the source IP address for those remote users and just after they send in the sequence of ports, we are going to take that IP and going to put that IP into the trusted list. So the first step is going to be just modifying this rule here and we are going to add a new condition. So if I check this entry now, it's allowing all the input traffic, that is traffic that is going to the router, using TCP ports 82, 91 and 22. So we'll add some additional conditions. The first one is going to be the input interface. So this traffic must be coming from internet. So I'm going to add here in, in interface, the one interface. If I check the topology, this is going to be ether one. Additionally, we need to be sure that this request is coming from a trusted IP. For doing that, I'm going to advance and source address list. We're going to create a list and the list is going to be trusted IPs. And now we can apply the changes and I will add a comment allowed Winbox and SSH to trusted IPs. But at this point, the trusted list is empty. If I go to other list, you can see that I don't have any entries here. If I go to trusted IPs, we don't have any IPs. So what happened if I traveling and now I try to have access to that device? I won't be able to do that. That is not allowed. I will go via remote desktop to that computer and I will try to have access to my, my rotic device. So in here in that device, if I go now and I try to go to the IP 200.10.20.2, you can see that is not allowed. The rule that we have just modified is blocking the access. If I check on statistics, we can see that there are some packets that have been dropped. And that is the packet that came from that computer because that IP is not in the trusted IP. So how are we going to capture the source IP from that user? That can be anywhere by using port knocking. So let's go with the first rule. And we'll define the sequence. So I'm going to use TCP and my sequence is going to be 8,000, 7,000 and 7440. So the rule number one will be listening in that port. So it's going to capture packets that are going to TCP port 8000. So let's add a new entry here in the firewall. The chain is going to be input protocol TCP destination 8000. The request must be coming in the interface ether one. And then basically what we're going to do is to capture the source IP and add that one to a temporal list. So I'm going to say add source to another list and I will call this just phase one knocking. And that entry can be in that list just for one minute. That means that the maximum time between knocks is gonna be one minute. So I'm going to apply that. And now I need to move that rule above the one that is dropping all the connections from internet. And I can add a comment, phase one, knocking. And now I will add a new rule. It's gonna be kind of similar, but we need to add a new condition. And if that the second rule will be matched only if it's coming from one IP that is already in the phase one. And this is just to be sure that we are following the specific order. So now chain input protocol TCP, the second port is 7000 in interface ether one. But now we have an extra condition. Source address must be one IP in phase one. The action, we're going to take the source IP and we'll add that to a temporal list that is going to be phase two knocking. Again, this is going to be there for one minute. Now we have this second rule that is listening on the port 7000. 
And finally, we'll receive the last knock, and that is 7440. So I'm going to add a new rule, chain input protocol TCP destination port 7440 coming in the one interface and now the IP must be in the phase two list. So now we have sent, we have identified the pattern, the sequence. Now we can trust that source IP. So I'm going to move that to the trusted IPs and let's say that I'm going to keep that IP there for one day. So now we can click OK and we are going to move the rule here. So we have the phase one knocking, we have the phase two knocking, and then we have the phase three knocking. So now only the users that are sending those knocks in that specific order will be added to the trusted list and they will have access via Winbox and SSH to this device. So let's see how this is going to work. So I need to send the first knock. So I'm going to add column 8000 and then I will click connect. So in this moment, the request has been sent to the router and we see that this IP has been added to the phase one knocking. I have one minute to send the second knock. The second port is 7000. So if I click in connect now, you can see that now that IP has been moved to the phase two knocking. And I have one minute again to send the last knock. And that is the port 7440. Now, if I click connect, that IP is going to be added to the trusted list. And I can simply remove the port and now I will gain access to that remote device. You can see that now that computer has access for 24 hours to the device. After 24 hours, that computer must send the sequence again. So you can see that port knocking is being applied only to the requests that are coming from internet. So we need to expand that and include also the local area network. We can simply remove the condition where we are specifying the in interface and that is going to be applied to all the interfaces in the router. In this case, the protection is just on the interface that is facing the public networks, internet basically. If you don't want to use the Winbox to send the knocks, you can install an application in your computer, you can install an application in your phone, in your tablet. There are several applications in the market that we can use in different operating systems. Here I have some options, like for example, we have this one that is called the port knocking tool that you can install on Windows. Then we have one for Android, this is completely free, so you can install that application in your phone. And if you are in a remote location, you only need to tap your device and that is going to send a sequence. All the knocks to your router and your IP in that place will be added as a trusted IP. And finally, there is one for iOS knock on D. Also free, you can see here that you are going to define the list, the protocols, all the sequence that we are using and that we have configured in the MyRotic device. So port knocking, a pretty simple mechanism to secure the open ports on MyRotic devices. I hope this video has been informative for you and I see you in the next one. Thank you.